Hi, I'm Judy Ryder, and I want to talk to you about texture in watercolor. Uh, I'm sure if you've seen any watercolors, you probably looked closely and wondered, gee, how did that artist get that uh, wet look, that uh, sand uh, to look so much like sand? How did they get the texture on the rocks and so forth? So I thought I would do uh, just some little mini demos on uh, different things that you'll see in watercolor that give, just give it that little extra special uh, feeling that you, perhaps you couldn't get it in other places. The first one I'm going to do actually is uh, it's almost like a little shoreline. If you want to um, uh, depict maybe some wet sand or just some spatter, maybe some little suggestion of seashells and so forth right at the shore's edge, uh, here's just a simple way to do it. The first thing I'm going to do is put just a wash of color uh, on the paper. And this is going to be pretty, pretty juicy. Uh, a little green, a little blue, just to kind of make it look like the ocean. Um, you know, I can even spray the paper just a little bit to help move that paint along. I'm not going to wet the whole paper though because I want to show you how some spattering, wet and dry, can make a difference uh, on dry paper and also wet paper. So let's say this is um, just the ocean's edge here. And we'll put just a little, little uh, bit of a yellow color right here at the, to indicate kind of a shoreline. Let it mix and mingle a little bit here. Okay, now this is dry paper. So um, at this point I'm looking at my paper and I'm wanting it to look like there's a spatter or some other little colors in it. So I can do a couple of different things. If I want to add some texture to the foreground, while it's dry, I can use a toothbrush. Just an old toothbrush, not the one you use every morning. And I load my paint with that paint. I actually have some uh, burnt sienna out here, which I'm going to put in there. And sometimes if the brush is too wet, it, um, it, it blobs instead of spatters. So we'll try this though. So I'm going to put just a little texture on the foreground where it's dry. And I just sort of sweep it across. Now, if I happen to get it up into the water, notice in the wet area when you spatter, it diffuses and softens. In the dry area, it stays uh, just whatever uh, amount of value and texture you have. Okay? Now, if you want to uh, change colors a little bit or put a secondary color in there, uh, clean your brush and you can uh, let's put a little um, pink in it, in the sand. There's always a little pink in the sand, so we'll. Same thing, just along the edge where it's uh, dry, it's going to be a, that shows you how when the water drips out of your brush, where it's dry, it'll stay put, but in the water, it kind of diffuses. Now, another fun thing to do is just to take a brush, um, a round brush, clean water, and then just in the wet area, just tap the water just a little bit. Okay, you can also at this point, with the spattering, if you want to loosen it up a little bit, you can always just do uh, a little bit of, hit the edge of it with the brush. Uh, you can also use a um, spray bottle of water and mist it and it will also give you some of those little bubbly areas that you like to see. Okay, one more color. We'll put in some, um, maybe just some darker blue and green just to kind of give you an idea of to go darker with it. And then as the paper dries, um, It'll, it'll stay put more. If it's wet, it'll diffuse. If it's dry, it'll stay put.
So that gives you an idea of how to do some texture using on dry paper and then also on wet paper.